Hey everyone, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Keisha and today I'm going to be talking to you about some of the books that I hope to read in the month of June. So I am pleasantly surprised to report that I actually read almost all of the books that I set out to read in May. Um, that wrap up will be up. Hopefully that will be the next video that I post and it may be this week, it may be next weekend, I'm not really sure. Um, as you all know, I've mentioned it plenty of times, I am in kind of the middle of summer reading right now, and I don't mean just summer reading, I mean the summer reading program at my library, and this week is the week that we actually are going to start the programs. It's the kickoff, it's going to be huge, and I am already out of energy, so I'm sure I'm going to be out of energy then too. Um, I've been doing a lot to prepare. I will go ahead and insert some clips here for those of you who might be interested in seeing all of the things that I've been working on at the library. Now, of course, you won't be seeing the programs here because we haven't started those yet, but you will see that we have really been working on decorating. Me and my coworker, Sydney, um, have gotten a lot of this together, and then our other coworkers are always great to lend a helping hand where needed. Um, and so we have been working really hard on this. My main project was turning the children's room into a rainforest. So I think I pre did a pretty decent job, but you guys let me know in the comments. Um, as long as the kids come in and say, wow, I think that's all I really care about at this point. So I want the kids to be impressed and the kids to love it and enjoy it. Um, it was a lot of hard work, two weeks on a ladder, trying to make things work that did not want to work. The humidity in our building is ridiculous and so anytime you try to tape something to a wall, the tape wants to come off and things want to fall down and it's just a big mess. But regardless, it has been pretty fun despite all of the exha exhaustion that comes with it and I'm really excited to kick off our summer reading program this week. And with all that being said, I want to go ahead and let you guys know that this is going to be my June TBR or possibility pile but there's a good chance that one, I will not get to all of these books this month, or two, I may end up becoming more of a mood reader this month and changing up what I feel like reading. So just know that if and when you do see a wrap up for this month, these books may or may not be on that list, but these are books that I'm really looking forward to reading soon, and so let's just go ahead and get into the list. So first up, I have Mother May I by Jocelyn or Jocelyn Jackson. I'm not really sure how she pronounces that. I probably should have looked that up before this video but it was all I could do to sit down to film, so it's fine. <laughs> um, so anyways, this book is like a suspense novel, I believe, and it's about this woman who wakes up one morning and she sees this witch or this woman who looks like a witch peeping into her bedroom window and it freaks her out, but then she ends up kind of brushing it off and saying, you know, it's probably because I just woke up, I was dreaming, it's not real. But then later on, she sees the witch at her daughter's school. Now this woman, she is married, she's got two girls and a baby boy. And this woman, this witch lady, she sees her in the parking lot of the school when she's going to the school to um, sit in on a rehearsal of one of her daughters and the play that she's in. And during this time, her baby gets kidnapped, a note is left, and she basically is in one of those situations where it's like, if you don't do it, I say, you're never going to see your kid again. So yeah, that's kind of the basis of the story. I do believe there's a revenge plot behind it, so I'm intrigued to see what that's going to be about. I don't really know anything else about it other than that, and I did start this book in May, towards the end of May, but I've only read about 30 pages of it so far, so I'm going to count it towards my June TBR. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm going to like it yet or not. This is my first Jocelyn Jackson book. But actually, my hairdresser is a big fan of Jocelyn Jackson and has been telling me to read her books for quite some time now. And this was her newest release and it was the one that sounded the most intriguing to me. So I decided to pick it up and give it a go. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing if I will like her. And then the next time I go get my hair done, I guess we'll have something else to talk about. We usually talk about books. Um, but I'm sure we're going to talk about this one too because she, I believe, was planning on reading it because she had had it on order. Um, so I'm really excited to talk to her about that one. Next up, I have Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. I'm listening to this one on audiobook. You guys may remember me saying that I don't really do audiobooks well and that still remains true. I don't catch all of the details in audiobooks and it takes a lot for me to pay attention to them. I've gotten to where I try to do that um, and listen to them when I'm on my way to work or on my way home or if I'm coloring on the Happy Color app on my phone, I will try to listen to it then. And every now and then at work, if I'm doing something a little bit more mindless and more just like tedious, then I will try to listen there as well. But this book has been on my TBR for about two years, and I'm trying to go through books on my TBR that have been on there a while that I don't mind listening to on audiobook, or I think I could manage on audio. 
And this is one of those books. So I decided to start it and I did also start this one towards the end of May, but I'm adding it to my June TBR because I won't finish it by the end of May. But this book, um, from what I can remember, um, is about this woman who wakes up and she's in a coma and she has no idea what's happened. But what I think is really interesting about her perspective is you're getting this all from this woman's perspective and she can like, she obviously when someone's in a coma, like they, they don't really move, like they may twitch every now and then, but they don't move, they're non-responsive, but she can still hear people talking and her mind is moving. And so she's hearing her husband come in the room. She's hearing her sister come in the room. And so I think that's a really interesting way to read, I guess. I don't know, it's, a, it's an interesting perspective. Um, so this book is in um, different timelines within the same, I mean, it's within like not long of each other, but, and it's within this woman's life, but it's like a before, then and now and so now she's in the coma then is telling like the events leading up to what happened to her and then the before is kind of giving you a glimpse into her childhood to see a little bit of her backstory and i'm really enjoying it so far um, i've heard it is a domestic thriller and may have some touchy subjects in there things i don't know if i like to read about or not i know i don't like these things but i don't know if it'll affect my enjoyment of the book or not so we'll see but I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm about 12% of the way, or I think I'm 15% of the way through the audiobook now. So I'm enjoying it so far and I'm excited to see what I will think. Next is The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. And this is one of my most anticipated books of the year, if not my most anticipated book of the year. Um, those of you who have been around a while will know that The Silent Patient is one of my all-time favorite books. And I was just really excited that Alex Michaelides had another book coming out, to be quite honest with you. So this one is kind of a dark academia type book and it involves this professor and this secret society of girls and this woman who believes that this professor has something to do with deaths of these women in this secret society. Um, that is a very poor synopsis. Sorry about that, but that's the gist of what it's about. I really could care less because I just knew I wanted to pick up another one of Alex's books. So that's why I'm really excited about it more than anything else. I have heard that there is like a what do you call it? A, like a hint, not a hint, I guess kind of for lack of a better term, like a nod to the silent patient in there. There's something, um, from the silent patient that pops up in this story. So if you haven't read the silent patient, I would highly recommend reading that one first, just in case you don't want to see. Cause I think what happens in the maidens, like, is it tells you kind of what happened in the silent patient. So I would highly recommend you reading that one first. And like I said, it's one of my all time favorite books. I love the twist. I love the story and the writing. It was just great. So I highly recommend that. But yes, I'm very excited to also read The Maidens this month. I forgot to mention, but The Maidens is releasing on June 15th and I do have it on pre-order. So I am going to be getting that one in um, and reading that one myself. And then I also have Daughter of Sparta that comes out this month as well. And I'm hoping that my library will get it in. I know we have it on our wish list, but I don't know like when our next book purchase is going to be. So, um, I'm hoping that we'll get that in soon. And if not, I may not read Daughter, Daughter of Sparta this month, but we'll just have to see. This is by Claire M. Andrews. And I think, so I haven't looked at the synopsis of this since a couple months ago. So I'm not going to tell a good synopsis of this, but I will just say, it's a Greek mythology retelling of, I believe it's Daphne and Apollo. I know it's Daphne and somebody. I think it's Daphne and Apollo. And I don't know that story. So I want to like Google the backstory of that to know like the real story and then read the retelling. But I believe, you know how like Hercules had all these different tasks that he had to do. I believe that Daphne is going to have to go through these different things. And there may be a labyrinth in this story. I can't remember if this is the one that I was excited about because there was a labyrinth in it or if that was lore by Alexandra Bracken. I don't remember. But anyways, regardless, I'm excited about this one. So I put it on my list. I don't know if I'll get to it this month because I don't know if I'll get my hands on it. And I didn't want to pre-order this one. I just wanted to borrow it from my library because I've been kind of iffy about YA this year. I think I'm kind of growing out of YA and into more adult novels. I'm reading a lot more thrillers. Um, given I'm still reading a lot of middle grade, but I just don't like that middle ground between middle grade and adult. So we'll see how I feel about that. Um, then I also have Sergeant Stubby, which this is G.I. Dog's Hero Pup of World War I, Sergeant Stubby, and I'm going to be reading this for the Middle Grade Book Club at my library, but this is not going to be for the page turners. I have changed the name for our summer reading program into um, Roaring Readers, and it's like a, lo a line reading a book. It's like kind of the graphic for it. Um, and so it, it goes along with our Tales and Tales summer reading theme, um, like animal tales and 
fairy tale stories. Yeah, anyway, so um, I wanted to read something a little bit different. This is a shorter novel, so I didn't feel like it was going to be too trying for them to read during the summer. But this is a fictional story based on the heroic true story of a stray dog that ends up going to war. His name is Sergeant Stubby. I believe he may be one of the most decorated war animals or the most decorated war animal um, in history. In the back, it's got some pictures of Sergeant Stubby and his time during the war. And this, I think this is going to be a really good topic for us to discuss. So that is going to be taking place in June as well. So I will be reading this one. And then I also have Witch Hat Adelaide Volume 4, which I believe was on my TBR last month and I did not get around to it. So it's on my TBR for this month. I really enjoy the series. I'm just kind of soaking it in slowly because there are only like, I don't know, maybe seven or eight books out and I only own like the first six. So I'm kind of taking it slow so I can enjoy these, but I don't want to have too much time gap between them either because I don't want to forget what's going on. But these are really great and I highly recommend if you have not checked out manga before this is a good place to start out um it's about a witch um it's about a girl well it's about a girl who for the longest time was thought that it was not possible for just anybody to be a witch and she finds out otherwise and ends up being apprenticed by this witch named quiffery and there's a dark side of magic there's a light side of magic you guys know how this goes so that is kind of the premise of this story also the art style um is just really beautiful kamama shirahama does a lot of the Marvel and DC cover art, so I highly recommend. It's just really good. So, anyways, um, next up, I've got The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. My coworker Stacy and my friend Olivia have both read this book and thought it was fantastic, so I have to read it. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't even remember what it's about. I know, I think it's got like dual timelines, and it may take place in the 20s, possibly, but it's about these women who I think maybe are trying to poison men for different reasons. I don't know. I'm not going to give good synopses today, guys, because I'm just kind of like my energy is depleted. So this is just books I'm excited to read and I hope to get to soon, I guess, mostly. But The Lost Apothecary sounds really good. I'm sure if you have been around BookTube or Bookstagram for a little bit, you have probably seen it pop up somewhere. It has really great ratings and I'm really excited to get to it. I feel like it's going to be a quick read for me and it's a pretty short book. Um, I'm on hold for it at my library right now, and I think it's going to be a few weeks before I get it in, so it may be like the end of June before I'm even able to read it, so we'll see how quickly I can get through that. Next up is The Last Bookshop in London by Madeline Martin. I do believe this was on my TBR for last month, but I did not get around to it, and I tried to get it at the very end of the month, and it was checked out, so I'm going to probably get it, I think, the second week in June, and hopefully I'll kind of be at a good stopping point with my other books so I can start that one, but it is kind of about this woman during... World War II? I think it's during World War II. And she has always wanted to come to London and live in London, but she did not expect it to be in the middle of a war and she did not expect to be working at a bookshop. But overall, this is a story about how books bring community together, especially in trying times. And honestly, that premise just reminded me a lot of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Marianne Schaefer and Annie Barrows. And I really loved that book and the movie, but the book was better. Um, and so that's kind of what drew me to this one and it's pretty short too So hopefully I can get through it and I'm really excited to try it out and see if I like it I haven't really heard very many people talk about it. So I'm excited to hopefully be one of the first lastly I have the inheritance games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So This book came up and I was like, oh that sounds interesting And I was like and then I lost interest and then people started talking about it again And then I lost interest and now people are talking about it again and I'm like, okay this book is basically, I, I can't tell you what it's about, except that it's been pitched to me as it's like Knives Out, the movie, and I thought Knives Out was really good and really funny, and so I'm like, if it's anything like Knives Out, I'll probably enjoy it, but once again, it is YA, and I'm kind of hesitant to read YA nowadays because, I don't know, I haven't been vibing with it for a really long time, so I'm a little hesitant, but I've really been intrigued to read The Inheritance Games. I know it's going to be a series now, which really kind of frustrates me because I'm not a series girl. Like, I know I'm reading, like, Witch Hat Adelier, but this is manga and it's a little bit different. Um, I believe series intimidate me a little bit and I don't always want to continue. I like the kind of one and done. I'm ready to move on to new characters, which is why I have not finished Harry Potter yet. I know. <laughs> I've watched the movies, like, countless times, but I'm only on, like, book four. But it's just because... I know the story even though I know like there's more detail in the books and I know it's the, the books are better I'm sure I, the ones I read I really enjoyed I just oh it's hard for me because I just want new things all the time so I'm not very good with series but we'll see how the inheritance games goes and we'll see if I continue 
So that is all of the books that I hope to read in the month of June. Like I said, I may not get around to all of these. I don't really know. Um, I've got a lot going on this month. It's going to be the busiest month of my year probably. And so I'm not really sure how much I'm going to want to read because I'm probably going to be exhausted, though I already kind of have been exhausted and I've read a lot. So, um, but I've noticed that throughout this year, I've kind of gone back and forth each month, like January, March, and May were really good reading months for me. And then February, April, and I'm expecting June to, to not be, because I'm kind of going back and forth where I read a lot and I have, I'm in a really good reading mood. And the other months, I'm still kind of reading some, but it's more middle grade or manga, or I'm not really, like I'm having to, I don't want to say force myself to read, but I'm having to like convince myself a little bit to read because I'm not just automatically thinking about reading. So yeah, I'm expecting June to be like that. Just with the way things have gone so far this year, that seems to be kind of how it's flip-flopping. So we will see how I do this month. I also may change some books up. I may end up adding some middle grade in here. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. I'm definitely probably going to be a little bit of a mood reader this month. And I'll probably add another audio book in here somewhere too, because I'm sure it won't take me the whole month to finish. Um, sometimes I'll lie about Alice Feeney, so another book may pop up. I just don't know what that's going to be yet, so I will let you guys know. But if you have read any of these books, please let me know in the comments what you thought about them. Um, if you think that I'm going to enjoy them or if you think I won't enjoy them, um, let me know what your thoughts are. And let me know if any of these books are on your TBR this month or if they are on your TBR just in general. Maybe not for this month, but, but for the long haul. And let me know what you're most excited to read this month. Like, if you had to pick one book on your TBR for this month, what is the one that you're most excited to read? Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you liked this video, go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications anytime I post a new video. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in and stopping by, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, friends.